Okay, I just had another dream. I was just driving and I said to my wife, hey, that chap needs help. Uh, look, look, wake up, wake up. You know, I don't mean wake up. I mean, um, look, 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 concentrate. We, we, we need to help this chap. He's on the side of the road. Look back there. He's got some emergency. So I went back to him. And apparently he had a gas uh, leak in his house. And uh, looks like he's a family man. He's got problems. It's an emergency. So I'm there to help. And goodness, if not the next minute, he's, he's, he's about to run past me with his Alsatian dog. He's got to take the dog for a run. And he's running extremely fast, of course, because there's an emergency going on. And it doesn't dawn on me, why is he running the dog with a gas emergency? People are like that in life, you know. I've said elsewhere, and I, I don't prioritise. And there's a great deal of rushing to cope. But they're not actually focused on coping with that which is most important. And I couldn't help the chap, of course. We are here in this life. It's short. We have priority. What is our priority? It's to know and love God. That is our priority. There's a million other things we could be rushing around doing. But really there's only one thing that's important. It's to be more and more aware of our God. That he's our heavenly dad, we're his child, and we're here learning. As far as we know, we're here learning the difference between good and evil. And may I say that that is more important even than helping other people in their many emergencies. Now that surprises me in saying that. You see, we do have a preoccupation with self. And shouldn't we assume this is for a very good reason? Because we should stay here for as long as the lessons are here. For us, in particular. God can take us at any time, of course, and change the lessons and so on. He's in charge. But we are here to learn. We're not here to turn this world into something wonderful. We are here to understand good and evil. And that actually seems to mean, in the light of knowing God, understanding God, being sensitive to him, his will, his leading, his values, his love of us, and his love of all. But it's the understanding and the, the adaption of our values and will that is crucial to being here. That is our priority. Not the many, many things we could get busy on in life. You know, I could be helping Grandma doing so and so, and Dad doing such and such, and the kids doing such and such, and the man next door who's doing a better garden, and helping the chap across the street because he wants to redecorate his house, and that's not what I'm here for. I'm here to learn about the awareness of God and the understanding of good and evil. And according to the Jesus story, majorly I am sent, sent as he was sent. We are sent to um, 
tell those that have ears to hear. Our understanding of what's priority in life. And it's not what they think it is, very often. And many of them won't hear. Fine, don't battle away to make them hear. You're not here for that anyway. And your being sent is a residual on having achieved, in a way, what you were sent to do. You were sent to be more and more aware of the goodness of God, that he's our dad, and to prioritize him in your life that that is our salvation and the only salvation of all people, as far as you know. And you're sent to tell others, those that have ears to hear, that this is the way to live, the way to be, what to understand, to be the greatest blessing to them. And if they're willing to hear, that's lovely, and if they're not, you go into the next city, don't you? (laughs) You move on and on. And it's okay. It's all wonderfully okay. Because God is with you. So your priority is always God being with you and being true to what you've learned today. And you trust him for everything else. That is his priority with you. And he has you sent. And he has you sent because that's going to be the greatest blessing to you. Not because he needs you to be sent. He could do it some other way. But he wants you to be doing it. In the story because he loves you. So we know our priorities now, don't we? It's to be here, becoming more and more aware of our God, and to bless those around us in a particular way, not to help them build their fish pond particularly, or help them get their shopping, or clean their car for them, or a million other things. But to let them know the goodness of God and give them opportunity to find out what is the true priority in their life from the point of view of their greatest blessedness. sooner we come to realize this, as far as I can see, is the better. <laughs> we encourage all to do likewise. We don't battle against a brick wall. We give to those that ask. For such prioritization, and those that have ears to hear, and the rest, many of which I might point out in their ways, are an absolute menace to each other. We pass by, we pass on, we do not battle against their will. You just waste resources and are distracted by such. And get into great dangers too, I might point out. Bless you. And you are blessed. Thanks to Dad. Our Heavenly Dad. Thank you, Dad. So it occurs to me that the story of the Good Samaritan wasn't about someone who realised the lady next door needed some help with babysitting. 
<laughs> and you go in to rescue her. It was a question of life and death. This man had been attacked and was left dying on the side of the road. Without your help, he will die. Why is that important? Because the way he's going to come to know God is by having more lessons in this life. Life here is important. So you rescue him out of the goodness of your heart, of course. And his response is that he loves you, not that you love him. Do you see? His response is that you have become as important to him as his very self because you are neighbor to him, the one that rescued him in dire need, dire distress. It's right that he includes you as his very self. You are not including him as your very self. He simply saw that he was dying and needed rescue and that you were the one that could do this. So you did. And then you passed on your way. You left enough money with the innkeeper to look after him and said, look, if you need more, I'll pay you when I return. I want to make sure he's okay. And off you went on your way. You haven't made him the one you rescued. Um, part of your very self. After all, I mean, this one was um, not even of your nationality. You, know, you were a Samaritan and he was not. He was a Jew. Your need of what's right is to help him get him to survive and she did it his need having been rescued is actually to see you as his very self to love you as himself well if he's going to do that my goodness he's going to listen to you isn't he you think about it. He would be on the road to learning what you learn, had learnt and know. And of course you've already been a fine example to him in rescuing him. Do you see? So yes, I do have some priority, even though I'm travelling somewhere, to interrupt my journey and rescue people that are dying, literally dying. Unnecessarily, if you like. <laughs> I could rescue them and they might have mm, years more life in which to learn and prioritize. So you do it. And of course it's a set up job. I mean, by God, he's, he's put you in this situation because well, this is going to actually affect someone so that they do have ears to hear. And if they don't have, and if they don't love you now as their very self, well, pass on your way, don't you? Now, the Samaritan obviously didn't think that uh, this was his priority. Well, his priority was, given the circumstance, to rescue you. Wow, what a super chap. From our point of view, if we are the Samaritan, so to speak, yep, we do just that. And if that then means that they have ears to hear, which it will do, ideally, well, that's wonderful, isn't it? We've been sent to such people. And if they don't have ears to hear, well, we pass on our way. 
Well, I've added far more to the story. I mean, obviously. But you see what I mean, don't you? Bless you. Look, there's something very amazing about Scripture. I don't want to worship it, but I can see why people end up thinking that their Scripture, whatever it is, is the Word of God. Because it has some incredibly beneficial advice and guidance. So much of it can be the shortcut to life eternal, if you like. Life abundant. If you're going to find it anywhere, it's probably in the scripture of your culture. Hmm. Well, of the major religions, the scripture usually has majors on having things that are an incredible blessing in life. So, it's a good place to work on at times, isn't it? But don't worship the scripture. There's going to be stuff in there that's got in there for all sorts of reasons and probably isn't right. Don't worship it as God, right? You're here to worship and love God. Not scripture, not a religion, not some teacher, some guru, but God. And I mean really God unmanifest. We seek advice from helpful people, of course. But our devotion is primarily to God. That seems to be the drift of most religions when we look at their scripture. It doesn't seem to be the priority of religions when we look at their theology and their rituals and their understanding of things. Hmm. Thank you, Dad.